Hey, it's Brian from quantlabs.net. Uh, what I'm about to show you is uh, a complete code analysis of the uh, TradeLink uh, open source trading platform done in uh, .NET and C Sharp. First off, I just want to say a couple of things. Uh, I've spent a long time analyzing all kinds of trading platforms, uh, ranging from high-end commercial trading platforms all the way down to open source trading platforms uh, like this, uh, both in Java uh, and .NET. And uh, let's give you a little background on the history that I've found with Java platforms. I've not really come across anything that really blows my mind. There are some functionally that look really good, but when you look at the source code, it's a lot of time you can't make heads or tails of what the code's doing. Uh, it's also lacking a lot of documentation community's not there, this is no support. Uh, also on the commercial front, there's some decent platforms. Uh, good ones I like are trading technologies. My favorite ones obviously uh, Deltix. Uh, a lot of people know that I've put on a hour, I think maybe hour or whatever long presentation from the founder of the, uh, from Deltix. Incredible, incredible platform. My intention was to go with uh, Deltix, but after talking to a lot of people in my community, uh, both members and just uh, regular visitors to the quantlabs.net site, I found that a lot of people um, it was just outside of their reach to uh, afford a platform like Delta. Because even a couple hundred dollars a month was a bit of a stretch, especially in this economy. And I have been talking to some people that are at nine figures. Back maybe a year ago, two years ago, could easily afford uh, a, a platform like Deltix, but it appears that uh, the economy's changed and things are just basically uh, it has put people in a position where they're a little uh, not secure about their funds. So they try to find out, find uh, open source trading uh, platforms like like the one I'm about to show you. So. If you haven't seen my video, uh, I have just put up a, uh, a video, or sorry, a core, a new, a new school or an academy called uh, Quantlabs slash Academy. Duh. Now, if you come under here and you look under uh, trading software, uh, what you'll find here is um, I've got a little video on it, and it will go over about um, the high frequency trading uh, platform. Uh, what I'm about to show is what it's based off. Of. So if you need to understand how to build it, all the different components, introduction, it's all here. Uh, this is all obviously paid. I'm just showing you what's behind the scenes. Um, and it's only really cheap, $27. So what I'm about to show you is that. Um, I'm not here to show you how to build it. I'm not here to show you all the different components. I just want to show you the code. Now, it took me two days to go through this code. The code is... Uh, quite good actually. Um, I've talked to some people, like some, I'll call them world-class quants, uh, who have and know about TradeLink. Uh, the comments I'm getting are quite positive in a way. If you're a small guy like me, starting from nothing or next to nothing, TradeLink is a good, op a good option. Uh, it's free obviously, you get the source code, so obviously you get the, the uh, advantages of the debugging capabilities of Visual Studio because it's in C Sharp and .NET, um, some other powerful things. But when I went through the code, I didn't realize how extensive it is. It has its own API. I'll show you that in a sec. It has something called an app kit, so you can basically develop your own third-party applications with this piece of software and be able to uh, extend it. And uh, you can also control licensing through this newer app called Warden. Uh, lots of testing uh, use cases in here. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, some interesting uh, research classes have been developed, and then of course all the um, components. So I'm not going to show you too much of the components, but I'll show you a popular one is um, the Gauntlet. Uh, so obviously you, it, it's now the thing is, is people need to understand is I'm, I've been part of this community on the email list for quite a while now, about two years. Um, so I've been eyeing the community. Uh, what really gets to me is because of the vast amount of, I'm sure, amount of years that Josh, um, 
the founder, I guess, of TradeLink and the project of TradeLink also uh, runs ProcPlay. He's putting a very extensive amount of work into this platform. You can see it, but let me go through the code. Um, the documentation, the quick start stuff is quite good. Uh, so kudos to him for doing it. But as I said, what, what really gets me is that people come into the community and they expect certain things to uh, run and, 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 and just to have a certain set of features that get pissed off and uh, really ticks you off because they're really not contributing anything outside of just complaints. So this code I'm about to show you is what we call legacy. Uh, before the Glean came along, this is the this is not a complete up-to-date version, but it's a good foundation to work off of. As for the Glean, um, I don't see myself using it because obviously uh, using, I'll call it the legacy part of TradeLink is more geared towards programmers. Now, I've done enough spiel as it is. Uh, probably the most important question people are going to ask, well, I'm new to all this. What's my experience uh, needed to understand how to work with something like a TradeLink? And what kind of programming skill levels do you need? Now, that's why Gleam came along as a new new component where you can develop strategies visually. Uh, I haven't played with it myself, so I really have no comment on it, but I understand the concept behind it. I also understand the concept of uh, where uh, the team obviously is completely uh, open source. This is an open source framework for trading. Uh, they need to establish uh, um, revenue models, no different than what I do here at quantlabs.net. That's so that they can exist, so that they can pump out more product to continue the evolution of projects like TradeLink and some of the other products they got, like Glean. So I get that. Uh, anybody that has a problem with that, I would easily recommend you go to another project because if you're a whiner, a hater, a complainer, uh, you know, you're really not doing any justice for uh, people like Prac or companies like Prackplay who are trying to uh, put out true open source products and uh, they put a lot of work into it and I just don't think they deserve the negative criticism that comes with it. So um, I know the, the Glean has probably been heavily uh, flack for that and just I, I, I get what the concept is. I know different than what I do. It's all about revenue and they can exist. So where does that leave the programmer? For, for somebody who's coming in if you are new, go with Glean. Simple as that. If you are a programmer or a newbie that's wanting to take it to the next step, this is a good platform to start with. But there's a lot of work to it, and it's quite advanced. Uh, I'm, I'm still, because I'm a stronger uh, Java developer and I have the experience, so the transition in C-sharp is not that difficult. The other good thing about the code is it's fairly uh, easy to pick up. I've seen some coding projects that are just a nightmare to work with, a hornet's nest as they like to call it. This one's quite easy to work with and I'll show you the code now, enough blabbing and let's go on with it. So I was going to show you the gauntlet. So here in the gauntlet main uh, C sharp file, uh, uh, oh, something happened there, oh, uh, my fault, uh, where's my Okay, so every, every uh, project, now what you have to understand, was so this is a solution file for TradeLink Suite, so there's all these sub-projects, so we're looking at the Gauntlet Visual Studio project, um, this is the main project uh, called Program, sets it all up, blah 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 blah, sets up the application and it executes the application, uh, this one's obviously called Gauntlet and then it runs it, so that's pretty standard in all the, um, the components within 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 uh, within uh, trailing so let me you can see I'm no expert in Visual Studio I'm using Visual Studio 2012 uh, there we go okay so this is the code um, the codes like I said fairly easy to follow um, thankfully there's lots of comments as well which are important um, it's not really but there, there's comments throughout the code, um, so you can easily pick up stuff. Uh, you know, it follows all the standard stuff that you get in, a, in any any language. Said there's um, the uh, comments and stuff that they obviously really help. That's what they're there for. People know how to use them. All these computer science engineers are being taught not to use comments. Well, bad, 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 bad. 
if you don't use them, uh, you want to confuse people, you have nothing but are a bona fide idiot when it comes to coding. So moving on, um, you can see there's lots of binding, un uh, unbinding, uh, lots of delegates here if you know about .NET and C Sharp. It's built off of delegates. Um, so you know you have to bind and, and unbind when you create them, subscribe to them. Like I said, I'm not here to teach you how to do C Sharp. Uh, okay, so that's generally the consensus of how the uh, code works. It's pretty straightforward, but I just want to give you now a high level of what we're dealing with. So we got Gauntlet. All the components are kind of built in similar ways. Now, for me, uh, let me just drop back to, okay, so I have my server IQ feed. Now, the powerful thing about uh, TradeLink is the amount of uh, brokers that it supports. So let me just pop in, in my, um, into my different, uh, I'll show you how this works. Okay, when you see server in the sub project here, like in this case, server IQ feed, um, that's basically your data provider. So in this case, I'm using IQ feed as my data provider. So in these cases here, you, the, 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 one of the big advantages with TradeLink is the amount of data providers that are available. Now, I don't know if they're all up to date. There are frequent updates, which is good. So if, if one of these providers changes their, their library or whatnot, you should still be okay to get it running. And of course, they have popular ones like Rhythmic, uh, the different NX Core, IQ feed, as I said, um, eSignal, uh, DBFX, Sterling, uh, TD, Zenfire, so some pretty popular ones. Uh, that's generally how that all works. You, you, you can just pop in and take a look at one of these uh, uh, code samples. So in my case, uh, uh, you know, the IQ fee program. Now, remember I told you about how that concept works. Um, so we are looking for this IQ feed feed from, which is here. Uh, let's see, I got something set up here. Here we go. So um, I won't say it's straightforward, but a nice thing is with these type of providers, they will shield you from the API of, of your provider, okay? Now, let's talk about execution. Now, I've tested this. If you go under the project broker servers, one of the key components is when you do a build on TradeLink, you do have to remove all the excess brokers and data feed providers in your project before you do your build. So that's why they don't exist there. You just delete them before you build it. But um, when I go to the source here, these are all your um, providers you can use for execution. So obviously there is the TWS server, which is for Interactive Brokers TWS, uh, Anvil, Lightspeed, which is really used for HFT, uh, Genesis, and uh, the Fast Protocol. All right, so um, in my case, we got TWS uh, server. What you'll notice here is that, um, as I said, everything's been done uh, in C-sharp. Here, in all the uh, servers, the broker servers are all done in C++. Not sure why, maybe it's a legacy thing, I have no idea. But uh, just as a note, that uh, those are all done in, uh, in, in C++. Not only that, but again, it's the same concept where if there are API changes that these connectors, both uh, the data provider as well as the execution connector will uh, save you time. So if you go under um, uh, TradeLink here, uh, you'll get your uh, TradeLink connectors, and these are all them. So obviously you just start up your uh, IQ feed, um, and then it should automatically connect into your IQ feed uh, client. So that is that on the broker side. It's quite good. Um, I've now, i got to add, I have tested a while back that both do work. Um, both the IQ feed and the TWS. So that is another big thing because when you start working with some of the other uh, open source projects, uh, you do get connectivity problems, both 
for your data as well as your uh, execution or order management um, provider as well, or in my case, the broker server. Okay, so we've gone over all of the uh, components, or at least one. Now let's talk about uh, the uh, strategy building. Now, let me just show you before we get there. The TradeLink API project. Now this is basically all, like it has its own API. Uh, I wouldn't say it's the most sophisticated, but it has everything you need, you know, for your order management, for your data provider, uh, what kind of security you're dealing with, your different order types, management of your delegates, like a console setup, if you're doing bars and all kinds of stuff. So I'll just load up the bar here. So. You know, it's all there. Um, again, remember what I said about comments, really important. And uh, they're there. It'll hopefully get you, let's say, up and running fast, but it'll get you up and running faster. So um, the API does exist. Now, there's also, as I said, the API app kit, which I haven't really gone through a lot of, but it's just more of a way to, let's say, if you want to put this platform up as a uh, as a service for delivering on the web, uh, the app kit you can control your users uh, through this project, and, and it's all auth uh, authenticated through Amazon, uh, through the S3 service, I believe, through the AWS. I'm really focused on that because I'm not intending to do that. But that kind of functionality does exist, and also the words the same way where you can more gear towards uh, user management. Anyway, so. I've shown you the, the API, looks cool. It has tick management as you can see. Right here, tick info, pretty cool, pretty cool. Okay, so um, there's the trade link common. Uh, same idea as the API, but these are obviously the universal uh, methods and classes that are used throughout the entire suite of all the app, um, all the app, uh, application components of trade link. Okay, now this is where it gets quite interesting. Um, if you come under here under server, where is it? Uh, where are you? There's a server piece uh, under the common. And, it, and, and everything's all built around what they call trackers. So when you have and open up a position or a uh, data uh, security that you're watching you can do all that through your tracker again everything's all event based where I showed you all the delegates so I'm not going to get into that but if you kind of go through the code and you know C sharp you should be able to pick it up pretty quick okay like I said there is the trade link um, server uh, now I found this quite interesting trade link servers allow trade link clients to talk to any supported broker the common interface, uh, this version of supporter supports communication with clients via uh, Windows messaging. Now there's a corresponding uh, client here as well. So that might be useful for messaging between all the different components. That's pretty cool. And then there's, uh, I believe, a, a window messaging uh, equivalent as well. I guess it's what the WN stands for. That's what I'm assuming. But again, uh, there's so much in this common. Uh, as I said, there's all the different trackers, uh, all the different order types, stop limit, uh, stop ordering, um, all the different, like I said, all the different trackers that we got here, um, all your data management as well throughout. So it's all pretty, I won't say, like I said, I won't say straight, uh, straightforward, but you'll pick it up pretty quick. There's also built-in uh, zipping capabilities because uh, there's a lot of serialization on the data um, gauntlet engine uh, kind of cool stuff also I need to highlight this uh, generic tracker so you can develop your own tracker and then uh, extend it out if need be so I wouldn't be surprised who the parent is but uh, doesn't look like it has a pair. I'm just curious. I'm gonna just try something here and see if there's a. Yeah, no. Sure. No. Okay, so um, if you are interested in learning about trading systems and how they work, 
I do think this is a really good platform for that as well. Um, just alone for that to play around with because as I said, it's free. Um, okay, so under the trade link research, these are some interesting things. The screener looks kind of cool. Uh, I've looked at a Java one, but uh, it's just all really playing with this stuff. All right, so what else do we have? Oh yes, the tests. No, let me, let me, I'll get back to that in a second. So I forgot to show you the, the really important, uh, how the, how the, how the, um, how the whole uh, strategies work within trading. So imagine you have trading the complete sweep, all the, uh, all the components, and then obviously you have, let's say, Gauntlet, Kadena, in order for it to load in a, a trading strategy using the API of TradeLink, uh, you need to load in the equivalent of a DLL. So this responses DLL is one of them for out of box. Uh, really, really good one. Uh, there's a, he's uh, Josh used this in one of his videos. The uh, S responses uh, simple SMA responses. So essentially, you're going to be using the API of TradeLink to set up all the data and all the management of all your real-time ticks as they come in, uh, basically building up a stream. So you build up all, as I said, you build up all your objects. Uh, and then you're gonna look for things like uh, got new bars. So when that event gets raised, which I'm sure this is, they'll do the following. And of course, obviously, you put your set of rules in here, your strategy, so if the market condition's flat, Again, it's going to be using the uh, trackers I was mentioning. So this one's going to be position tracker. Um, and again, once you get your head wrapped around the concept, the architecture of, uh, of, the, of the platform, it's pretty pretty easy to pick up. So in my case, it will grab uh, the latest uh, close um, and I'll calculate some SMA somewhere. Get calculated somewhere around here. If it's uh, greater than the SMA, then do something, send out an order, buy in this case to sell, blah, 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 okay? Um, so this is a good example to work off of. Um, yeah, uh, pairs tracker example uh, for pairs trading, I guess. So it's all there, uh, and, and as I said, if anything I've seen code-wise in any platform, this is a good end-to-end -end platform. Uh, it's pretty powerful. You can easily extend uh, all the functionality of TradeLink and, and use it as a base to, to build your own custom uh, custom functionality. Now the thing is, um, there's something called, uh, so people know, there is something called uh, uh, Practlate Bridge, just so people know about this. Thing. Uh, yeah, it's called Bridge here. And what Bridge does, it enables you to uh, bridge uh, all your uh, strategies from both our MATLAB and integrate it into uh, TradeLink. It's pretty powerful. Um, and uh, it's something it might might be worth looking into, but just so people know that obviously there's a fee for this. Uh, I don't know the amount, but here's the purchase. If you're interested in this type of service, uh, yeah, not cheap, and it's uh, three hundred dollars a month. Um, so it might be out of reach for some people, but but you know, for people that it's still kind of doable. All right, so back to where I was going to go with that conversation. That's one option. So in my case, obviously, you know, I do R MATLAB. Uh, you can integrate MATLAB e not well, not easily into into uh, TradeLink, but again, um, back to my uh, academy. Uh, I've I've done a course on this. I've done a webinar on this. I've shown demos of this, and let me show you what has been put together. Uh, there is a Simulink uh, demo, and you can also do this with MATLAB um, as well. And basically, what you're doing is if you go, you know, watch again this video, uh, I'll, 
you know, you just come under for the, for the Simulink, and what I want to show you is the Simulink uh, MATLAB uh, toolbox, and then just go under uh, Simulink. There's a Simulink in there at the very last one here. That's this is the one I'm referring to. Uh, so the Simulink, it's quite quite powerful. I think when people see this, they go, "Wow, this is pretty powerful." Um, with Simulink, what you can do, uh, and and again, MATLAB, and just I'll say it generally, is you can uh, co-generate from MATLAB your C++, create a DLL, and then be able to have, obviously, uh, TradeLink call that DLL and access it through .NET. That's a, a very powerful feature, and, and, and it's all done natively, uh, which is the best way. Now, there's other ways you can do it uh, through the MATLAB Builder NE is another option. Um, that's kind of what we consider a lazy way because it supports a lot of the functions of MATLAB where uh, the MATLAB uh, Simulink and through the MATLAB compiler process to co-generate it's quite restrictive but if you have a raw algorithm where you're not using any of the uh, toolbox functionality it's a great option uh, to implement into TradeLink and I'm planning to go using both uh, options, co-generating, as well as uh, using the builder any option. Ah, so that's a lot there. Um, so I've done all kinds of demos on that, but that course I just showed you, this this will show you that. Uh, I don't know what the price is, like 37 bucks for that to understand how to do that, how to create a DLL and then implement it into TradeLink. I've got a whole webinar revolving around that. that was, demo to my members back in January 2013. All right, so let's assume you got MATLAB, you want to use the MATLAB Builder NE, not use code generation, you can do it, but the code accessing the objects of MATLAB from .NET, especially in C Sharp, is really ugly, something I'm not too keen on using, but it can be done, okay, it can be done. Uh, another option is use the production server, but that seems to be out of reach. It's, a very, it's probably the most expensive uh, toolbox from MathWorks for that as well, just for those that were curious. Um, now, the other option, obviously, is to use R. Now, when it comes to what we'll call a bridging technology, no different than this uh, Prac play bridge that I was talking about, is, is, it's fine for when you're monitoring something online or in the markets. But if you're using it for production purposes, live trading, it's the option I wouldn't go with. Uh, if you're needing to just monitor the markets, raise an event, yes, you can use uh, the MATLAB Builder NE or even the MATLAB Builder JA as an option uh, if you're using Java. Uh, and you really want to co-generate if you're going to use it for live production purposes. Now, let's talk about R. Um, as I said, this is an option that you can use because you have the ability to uh, use R to bridge it with into uh, into MATLAB or sorry into TradeLink. Um, there, you know, basically what it does is through I can't remember what R packages R dot R R dot net or something like that. Let me just see R R dot net. I can't, I can't remember what it's called, but uh, yeah, this is it here. Uh, this can be used as an option to bridge your R code into .NET, like a C Sharp. And it's no different than if you're using bridging technology. It's going to open up a session of R within your .NET runtime, and it's going to, uh, it takes a bit, a couple of seconds to, uh, to establish that connection to get the session uh, executed, which obviously takes time. It's fine again if you're doing it for monitoring or back testing, but again, I, I would not recommend using it for live testing. Just to establish that session within your runtime uh, for R takes a bit of time, and that will just some. This is an option I wouldn't go with. So obviously, R integration into anything is not something that I would kind of recommend, and. Uh, that's why I like using MATLAB, basically, because of, like the cogeneration option. So back to uh, TradeLink. So this is a very powerful uh, platform, as I said. Um, 
blabbed a lot. It's probably a very long video. I'm uh, just trying to give everybody a, a, one video to look at, a complete synopsis on why I like my trade link, why I like my MATLAB. I'm not sitting here knocking R, <laughs> uh, but there are some disadvantages, and I explain those and some of the advantages that you get with MATLAB. So hopefully uh, you learned some stuff, got comments, concerns, all that, just reach out to me and uh, we can talk them through. But as I said, I'm, I'm done with all the comments and criticisms, if this is the right way or the wrong way at this point. This, this is what I see works for me. Uh, it's the smartest way from my point of view. Yes, there are better options. I know that. Is TradeLink perfect? Absolutely not. But for somebody starting from ground zero and with very little starting cap, I think this is a good option. In terms of moving to the next steps, you probably want to look at, again, at a Delta so if you can afford it, or you can go the ultimate way if you're really needing speed, FPGA with Simulink using uh, the FPGA solutions that uh, MathWorks has for that world. But again, that's a pricey option as well. Again, I'm going to shut up now. Thank you very much for uh, listening and blah, 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 blah. Hopefully you... Uh, got something out of this, maybe a lot of stuff, who knows, but these are options that uh, you have, and this is what I'm looking at uh, moving forward. Talk to you later.